For the last several decades, there has been a huge debate over private prisons and whether private prisons should be legally allowed and authorized. Um, as recently as President Obama stated that the federal government would not be housing uh, specific offenders in private prisons any longer uh, because it was deemed as immoral uh, to make money off of the suffering of offenders. But private prisons have a long, long history. The privatization of correctional authority is not a new concept for the United States prison system. Like its historical predecessors, the contract labor and convict lease systems allowed individuals and allowed companies to create and make money off of the labor of inmates. Um, as long as a company or a producer provided the raw materials, inmates were able to and forced into slave labor or very cheap labor. And most of the money was actually paid to the state and it helped the state fend off and allay some of the costs involved with imprisoning uh, offenders. Uh, eventually the reform movements determined that the contract lease and or the contract labor and convict lease systems were unconstitutional and they were ended. The modern private prison system is a development in response to additional physical considerations. It's thought to be a cheaper alternative than the public in prison institutions. Um, despite their expansion, the efficacy of private prisons remains an elusive concept. There is an argument that punishment for violation of societal norms and deviance into criminal activity should be punished by the state and only by the state. Unlike states, it's impossible for corporations to be truly neutral actors because they're primarily motiv motivated by profit. For-profit prisons are concerned with the bottom line and the philosophy, the thought that a person is sent to prison as their punishment, not for their punishment, goes into play here because state governments speak for the collective voice of the community, while corporations speak for the interests of their own company and their stockholders. Allowing a corporation to operate as a collective force of the community could undermine the moral agreements of the community itself. The argument is that private prisons is a violation of the social contract that is made between society and the individual, where the individual gives up some of its freedoms and some of its liberties to protect the greater good of the society with the promise that the state will protect the individual and punish those that are violating societal norms and expectations. As a police officer or a correctional officer that's working for a public entity, such as the Odessa Police Department or the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, these agents are protected through qualified immunity. Although we have other classes that get into great detail about qualified immunity and what it is and how it protects police officers, so that they can do their job without fear of being sued, uh, this immunity is not available to private employees, to private prisons. The Supreme Court has made it increasingly difficult for uh, officers, cor private correctional officers, to claim qualified immunity because they're private citizens. They are not public agents of the government. That being said, the Supreme Court has also made it difficult for inmates claims to be covered under federal law and to be qualified under 42-1983. More specifically, the court has chosen to defer any litigation of inmates against 
private citizens um, must be done in the state court. Only in the event that adequate state tort law is unavailable may the inmate pursue relief under the federal constitution. Also, the prisoner cannot sue the corporation for damages, only the individual that has effectively um, violated their constitutional rights. Okay. Some contend that private prisons are more legally accountable than their public counterparts, which is covered in the next slide. There are those that argue that private correctional officers are under a greater amount of accountability because they are not protected by qualified immunity. And they can and do and are sued in the state tort courts. The majority of evidence speaks to the contrary of this. However, uh, one case against Corrections Corporation of America, uh, Corrections Corporation ended up having to pay $1.5 million to the inmate um, because of poor living conditions that were provided. Uh, despite not being afford, afforded qualified immunity protections, private prisons, employees eh, still maintain a great deal of protection throughout the, in, through insurance coverage, through employer protections. Uh, with a judicially conservative approach of the Supreme Court, these factors are unlikely to change. It's difficult for the states to ensure accountability and oversight among private prisons. Once the private corporations take control of state inmates, it becomes very difficult for state contracts to be rescinded. Not only are monitoring mechanisms ineffective due to political considerations and transparency issues, it is difficult for the states to resume control in the event that abuse or neglect is covered. Gentry in 1986 referred to this issue as the entrenchment problem. Once private firms win a contract, they quickly become entrenched in the state's correctional system. Ultimately, the states that have contracted with private firms may not have the ability to resume control of the contract uh, until the contract has been completed. Uh, competition is unlikely to be effective as two corporations own more than 75% of the market share. Those two corporations are Corrections Corporation of America, and GEO. Uh, we do have GEO prisons just down the street in Big Spring, Texas. Low visibility coupled with the discretionary nature of private correctional management uh, is a recipe for disparity, and there is no overall appearance of accountability uh, that has made it into the research. Overall, the comparative research on public and private prisons is rather limited. There is no hard empirical evidence that says private prisons will save the government money. I know when I worked for Corrections Corporation of America, we charged the federal government $90 a day per inmate uh, with a guarantee that they would keep the prison at three quarters full. If they could not keep the prison at three quarters full, the federal government had to pay uh, the remainder of the contract. And as I've mentioned before, it's really hard to get out of those contracts. Uh, there is very little research that's available. Uh, the research that is available, findings remain generally inconclusive. It is possible that state and federally operated institutions offer more programs than private institutions, but participation is greater in privately operated facilities. Okay. So there might be more quality, the more quantity programs available at the state and federal level, but the quality and the participation is greater at the private level. The researchers have found that private facilities are not as crowded they generally have lower rates of inmate assaults and homicides, even when controlling for security level. Even so, these findings remain tentative. The inc inconsistency is more than likely the result of the lack of the available data 
on private institutions because they're very secretive. They don't share a whole lot of their information. It will be necessary for researchers to obtain greater access to financial information of these private companies and utilize stronger methodological techniques in future studies to verify the conclusions of the research. Politicians and researchers alike should push for increased public access to the information from privately run institutions to find out if it is actually saving the government money by having the private institutions run the prisons.